So let's do the next case. This is, and again, remember, if you have any questions along the way, please just type them into the chat box and I'd be happy to answer them um, to the best of my ability. Okay, this is a 60-year-old man with a black nodule on the cheek. And here we see the nodule. We've got a few pieces of tissue here. Here's one, the other. Uh-oh, says my internet connection's unstable. That's never good. And when we get closer here, you can see that this lesion is also spindle cells, which most of the cases we're looking at today will be. But look at how the spindle cells are arranged. They're arranged in these like these unusual fascicles. They're very like tightly collected together and elongated fascicles, but they're almost like so discreet, right? The, the fascicles almost look a little bit like nests. So I kind of jokingly call these nesticles. My residents always laugh, so I keep saying it. But in any case, it's kind of like a, a hybrid between a nest of melanocytes and a fascicle, okay? And this is a common pattern for what this is, which is, of course, spindle cell melanoma. Look, you, you can even see the melanin pigment is everywhere in this lesion, right? Um, and so, the you know, melanocytes, uh, both nevi and melanoma, they, you know, melanocytes like to nest together and cling to their neighboring melanocytes and make nests, right? That's one thing that melanocytes really like to do for some reason. And when melanocytes get in malignant and become spindle, they still have that tendency to want to clump together and nest with their neighbors. Or Dr. Weiss liked to say packeting. That was the way she referred to this, that these make packets of spindle cells. So if you see spindle cells that make a packet arrangement or a nest slash fascicle arrangement, nesticle arrangement, if you like, always think of spindle cell melanoma. The thing I will point out is that sometimes these fascicles can kind of especially if there's no melanin pigment present, which a lot of times you can see spindle cell melanomas with very little or no pigment. So you do not have to have melanin pigment to make a diagnosis of any type of melanoma. Plenty of melanomas are amelanotic or only focally uh, producing melanin, okay? So when you have a lot of melanin, it's very helpful, but it, uh, you don't have to, to have it. I see melanomas all the time that lack, uh, that lack uh, melanin pigment. And uh, so, but I, what I would point out though is when there is no pigment present, this fascicular kind of arrangement can really um, make you think of a leiomyosarcoma, I think. And that's, I remember early in training when I, when I was, um, when I was in, uh, in residency, I saw a case and I thought, oh, this is going to be leiomyosarcoma. Nope, spindle cell melanoma. So always remember that, that these really can look uh, like smooth muscle sometimes. And that would be, of course, a very big mistake because cutaneous leiomyosarcomas, when they're confined to the dermis, have almost no risk of metastasis. Um, and uh, spindle cell melanoma, very bad, obviously. I mean, the, they don't behave, to my knowledge, spindle cell melanomas don't behave any differently than other types of like regular melanoma, like the epithelioid types that we're most familiar with on a same depth basis. So very different from desmoplastic melanoma. Um, so here, the thing is, is that when I see spindle cell melanomas, the majority of them are going to be big, huge, deep, kind of nodular uh, pattern of melanoma composed of spindle cells, and usually they have brisk mitotic activity, all the bad features. So whether or not there's spindle cells there doesn't really matter at that point. We already have a T4 and it's ulcerated. So it's a T4B melanoma, as bad a primary melanoma as you can get basically right here. And I'd say that majority of spindle cell melanomas I see are this way, okay? So remember that they can mimic leiomyosarcoma. Remember that they may have pigment or they may not. Um, uh, the, oh, that, the other important distinction and the reason I put this case in right after the last one is you see how different this is than desmoplastic melanoma, right? The, in name, it's confusing because in the past, a lot of times people used desmoplastic melanoma to refer to those scar-like hypocellular ones like I just showed you, like right here. And they would also use them to refer to these cellular spindle cell melanomas, the ones that look like an, like you would look at this if there wasn't pigment and think, oh, sarcoma maybe, right? So that's the main easy difference. If you look at it and you think, wow, this looks like a nasty spindle cell tumor, looks like a sarcoma, um, and it ends up staining like melanoma, that's a spindle cell melanoma. If you look at it and you think, wow, it looks kind of like a neurofibroma or a scar, but it's got some scattered hyperchromatic cells and it stains with S100, that's a desmoplastic melanoma. The difference is the cellularity. That's the main thing here. Hypocellular, desmo, hypercellular, spindle. And the reason in the past, again, the old literature is confusing here because desmoplastic got use, uh, used 
loosely to refer to any melanoma with spindle cells, and that's not accurate. And it was actually Klaus Busam, a, a well-known dermatopathologist from Memorial Sloan Kettering, who really wrote some of the landmark papers in the early 2000s, um, talking about that we should really distinguish purely desmoplastic, hypocellular, fibrotic background melanomas like this, because these, when they're pure, behave differently, whereas these behave more like a regular melanoma, okay? Uh, let's see, what are the other things? Oh, the, this case actually did have a melanoma in situ component. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. Um, I think that's kind of true of big nodular melanomas. Sometimes they seem to lose their in situ component. I suspect that most of them started with an in situ component, but because they grow quickly and they often ulcerate, I think sometimes the, uh, the in situ component gets wiped out maybe. I don't know that for sure, but I, I wonder if that's what happens. But here you can see these are almost more like regular melanoma, epithelioid, ugly melanoma cells in the epidermis with pagetoid spread, right? Lots of it. So that's pretty helpful. Okay, and then um, what's the other thing? Oh yes, uh, two other things to point out here. Number one is this, that even though this lesion looked totally black clinically, melanin pigment is not black, is never black. It is brown, always brown. And well, there is another type of melanin that's actually kind of a reddish color, I think. But in any case, it's not black. The human body, to my knowledge, does not make any truly black pigment. Black particles in a tissue specimen is exogenous. It is either metal particles from, from something, it's tattoo ink, it's carbon that we've breathed from the air, or that got it got in, you know, we put into us with a pencil stab injury and it's graphite, or something else, or people drinking colloidal silver and it deposits in the tissue, argyria, any of those things, those are things that make little black particles you do not see black, um, uh, and the reason I point this out is I was giving a lecture once at a physician, I'm sorry, a pathologist assistant meeting, and I said, oh, you can use black ink for the deep margin on a melanoma excision, and uh, there was like this gasp in the audience, and I was like, well, like, what's the problem? And they said, oh, but it's black. I mean, it's for melanoma, isn't it going to make the margins confusing? And I was like, oh, no, no, because actually melanin's never black, it's brown. So in any case, just to make sure that everyone's fully aware of that, uh, to remember, okay? And then the last feature is this, that these spindled cellular melanomas, they, they will stain with S100 and SOX10, and they do um, stain with a MART1 or HMB45. Uh, I, I like MART1 a lot better than HMB45 uh, for the differentiated type of melanocytic marker. Um, it just seems to be more crisp and a little more sensitive uh, in my hands. But, but sometimes these spindled ones lose either partially or completely lose expression. So I've seen plenty of these where there's strong diffuse S100 or SOX10, but negative for MART1 and HMB45, and maybe there's no in situ component. And then people would always send these to me in consult and say, I think this is a malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor on the scalp, in the skin of an 80 year old man. And I was like, no way, no, no way, not possible. MPNST almost never occurs in the skin. It is almost always a large, deep mass arising from deep nerves or a deep neurofibroma. Even patients with neurofibromatosis who have tons of cutaneous neurofibromas, almost never do you see malignant transformation of those cutaneous ones. It's their big, deep, um, diffuse or plexiform type neurofibromas that tend to be the ones that are the precursors for MPNST. And also, like I mentioned earlier, malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor paradoxically the spindle cell form of it is, is usually either negative, about half of cases are negative for S100 and SOX10, or only patchy, weak, positive. Strong, diffuse S100 or SOX10 in a spindle cell tumor, very unlikely to be MPNST. And I've got a whole long video about that. Again, the link is on that, that bone and soft tissue page I just pulled up, and also on my YouTube channel. And you can check that out if you're ever in need of information about MPNST. But in any case, it is not worrisome at all if I see a malignant spindle cell tumor in the skin with strong diffuse S100 or SOX10 staining, that is spindle cell melanoma. A top 10 or 20 things on the differential is basically, to me, that is spindle cell melanoma unless you can somehow prove to me it's something else. So um, even if there's no MART1, okay? And I have seen many, many, many cases of spindle cell melanoma that uh, didn't have pigment or in situ and were only S100 or SOX10 positive, and I have no problem at all calling those spindle cell melanoma. Okay, so that's an example of a, of a cellular spindle cell melanoma.